I thought Mike Bobo and his offensive staff did an incredible job. That's what Kirby Smart said about his offense after the Auburn win over the weekend, playing in an, uh, a crazy hostile environment. Georgia had zero pre-snap penalties, no false starts, uh, no illegal procedures, and they did it uh, you know, in one of the toughest places to play in the SEC. So I know that Georgia fans, a lot of them love to hate on Mike Bobo, right? They have for years, they have this year, and to a certain extent, I get it. I mean, Georgia's, Georgia hasn't scored more than 27 points against a real quality opponent all year. They've only played two. They uh, just scored 24 against Carolina, 27 at Auburn. But if you ask Kirby Smart, I think he is, you know, fine where the offense is now. He knows that, you know, running backs are banged up. He doesn't have explosiveness in the run game. Um, his best receiver, Lad Bukaki, has been out for pretty much the whole year. And he's got a new starter in Carson Beck. I don't think he's ever going to say anything bad about Mike Bobo, especially publicly. I mean, they're boys. Mike Bobo could come out and they only score 10 points in a game. And I think Kirby would not publicly say anything bad about Mike Bobo. He would behind the scenes in the coaching staff meetings, but not that. Here's what else he had to say about that. Composure is a big part of it. Talking about Carson Beck and the offense playing in that type of environment. I thought we would have some composure and we simulated having some after getting back up and not letting it spiral. So I thought Mike Bobo and his offensive staff did an incredible job. You take a quarterback who's never played on the road and start at Auburn, and you don't have any procedure penalties. You had good organization, good substitution patterns. You had good snap count variation, changing of tempos. I thought they did a good job managing that, but that's not the issue now. I'm worried about Kentucky now. They've got a really good defense. And they do. I think they have like 14 plus sacks already on the season. They get after it. They're going to get after Carson Beck, trying to make things uncomfortable. Um, but they need to be ready. The run game is slowly coming back. Dejan Edwards is healthy. Dylan Bell is a great change of pace back. Get Brock Bowers the football is all I have to say. Arguably the best player in all of college football. When they went to him, when the game mattered most, plays happen. Got to get him the ball early, get some points in the first quarter. Here's what Kirby had to say about Kentucky's defense, though. He said, the variation they run, the defense they run is very unique. You don't play a lot of teams just like them. They have a lot of overhangs, what I call depth in defense. They have people at the second level all over the place. There's not a lot of free yards out there. They make you earn everything you get. They're massive up front. They have big people. They play 3-4 and 4-3. And the teams they play odd front, as they call it, they do a really good job of snapping the or stopping the run game. Excuse me. These guys are really good at stopping the run, and they're real physical, and they have good scheme. It's not easy to mimic. I've been saying this before the season. I said Kentucky was going to be the second best team in the SEC East this year. I even preseason picked them to beat Tennessee later this season. I like Kentucky. They always play tough physical defense, and they've got some guys. They've got guys who can get after the passer. They've got guys who can, you know, clog those lanes in the middle. But Georgia's going to have to run on the perimeter. Uh, they have not done, in my opinion, a great job of running in between the tackles. They're best when they get Dejan Edwards out in space and they've got some some blockers pulling, trying to get to the second level. So, um, you know, coincidentally, you know, that's what Georgia needs to do too. Kentucky's going to run on the edges, on the perimeter. Counter, power, they've got big physical offensive linemen, but they're athletic too. They can play in space and they can move and get out ahead and open up those run lanes uh, for Ray Davis, who has been phenomenal. The way they just ran through Florida, just kicked their butts up and down the field, play after play, was really impressive. And Georgia's going to need guys like Marvin Jones Jr., who just hasn't showed up. He hasn't shown up. He's not flashing. Former five-star. He's got to do a better job. He needs to that, – that light needs to come on for him. Chaz Chambliss has to do a better job of keeping contained and not getting up the field so much where they slip behind him and get the edge and, and make a big play. Auburn tested Georgia on the perimeter outside of the tackles, and they picked up a lot of yards there. Now, of course, the quarterback was a big reason. Uh, Peyton Thorne, Robbie Asher, they did a good job running the ball, getting it to the outside. Devin Leary is not going to run on Georgia. He's not been a great passer this year either. He's thrown for 10 touchdowns, but he's on like 56, 57% completion percentage. That's bad. That's bad quarterback play. If you can't even get to that 60% mark, and in offense, uh, in college football today, where you could kind of dink and dunk if you need to, um, he's not accurate down the field. If they're going to beat Georgia, they need to run through Georgia. And they can do that 
if Georgia's edge and those outside linebackers are not doing their job and they let Kentucky get to the outside and get to the perimeter and then get upfield, it's going to be a bad day. It's going to be a real, real bad day for the dogs uh, if they can't control the outside. Interior, and I, I think they play really well. Nazir Stackhouse, Kristen Miller, Warren Brinson, Zion Logue, they play well between the tackles defensively. It's on the edge and on the perimeter where they have to do a better job. Um, here's what Kirby had to say about Carson Beck, what he learned from Carson Beck after that big Auburn game, where Carson made some throws now. He threw some ropes. He's not playing perfect, and he's just a little bit off with his guys down the field. They're going to have to hit those against Kentucky. They're going to have to hit at least one or two deep balls. One of them needs to go for a touchdown, but that part of the offense needs to improve and progress, especially against a Kentucky team that's going to come after Carson. So whether it's, you know, get the screen game going or, you know, a lot of protection up front. You only have two receivers going out. One of them's going deep. Got to hit them whatever way. Get the ball to Brock Bowers, dude. Whatever you got to do. Here's what Kirby had to say. He said, you know, most quarterbacks, uh, the start of the first game, you may not know enough. I feel like I had this relationship and I knew Carson. I don't feel like I've learned a lot because I knew a lot already. He's been in the system. He's played, not played in that environment. I'm not trying to change the experience, but I had been around the kid. He's been around the program, and he's been in the offense. I've seen him have good days on third down against our defense, bad days. I've seen him make good decisions with the ball. He's really efficient. I guess the only thing that I've learned is that he does have natural composure. I already thought that because of the way he practices, but he doesn't get flustered easily. Now, if this is a close game down the stretch, they're going to need Carson to make some throws towards the end of the game. And he's got that composure, that poise in the pocket. He doesn't get rattled. Um, he does a good job of not turning the ball over. Uh, I think he's thrown a couple picks this year, two, maybe three. One against Auburn, one against uh, whoever on a ball he threw deep down the field that he thought was a free play. It turned out it wasn't. But I thought Jalen Simpson just made a hell of a play on the ball uh, on that interception on, I think, the Georgia's second drive of the season. But um, he talked more about offensive identity. And you can read all of this over on Dog Quest. We got every word from Kirby's Monday press conference over on the website. It's free. Free story. You can read all of this. Uh, and the newsletter is free. You can sign it up uh, down below for free in that link below. He said the offensive identity uh, is to do what it takes. That's essentially what it comes down to, right? You'd love to have this defined that we're going to go out and bully you and run it through you, but nobody really does that. He talked about Kentucky doing it a little bit against Florida, but no one's going to do that every game. If you have one identity, then that's probably what they're going to try to stop. I think that Kentucky's balanced. When you look at the explosiveness in our league, they're probably 50-50 on explosive runs and explosive passes. They're balanced. So um, going back to us, I think our identity has been that up front, um, up and down in the red zone, excuse me, we've been pretty dang good on third down, especially against Auburn. Uh, third and longs, third and mediums, Georgia was great. They're going to need to do that against Kentucky too. They're going to be in some situations where it's third and medium, third and long, more than they would like. Uh, we've got a lot of things we can work on, but as far as whether uh, it's about the backs or not, we don't cry over what we don't have, which is you don't have explosiveness at the running back position. Little bit of Dylan Bell, little bit with Dejan Edwards, but overall, talking about 40, 50 yard runs, explosive plays in the run game, Georgia doesn't have it right now. And they've got to figure that out. They have to get explosive plays elsewhere because it's not coming from the run game. Um, you figure out what you've got, you figure out uh, what they can do. So I'm not going to sit up here and complain about it with the help or safety or how many backs we've got. That's not what we worry about. What we have is what we have. Um, so they're still figuring out their identity on offense, but it's it's run the ball, play physical. But they're going to have to make some throws, and they're going to have to make more throws down the field. This is a massive, massive game. Just want to add that again. Uh, Georgia fans already know this. The SEC East could be up for grabs. If Georgia loses this game, they need Kentucky to lose twice. And if they beat Georgia on the road at night between the hedges, who's to say they won't go up to uh, – or? beat Tennessee at home, right? Um, this is a good Kentucky team and one I tried to tell people about in the preseason. Tennessee fans got real triggered at me when I said Kentucky was better than them preseason. Now they look better than them because they're 5-0 and and Tennessee's not the team I think most people thought they were, but Georgia's going to have a real fight on their hands. Uh, they need to continue to play well on third down offensively. They've got to run the ball better um, between the tackles, they need good guard play. They can make plays on the perimeter. <clears throat> Be 
feed Brock Bowers, let Dylan Bell run the football a little bit more. Hopefully, Lad McConkey is back and healthy. They'll get him the ball more. But overall, Kirby Smart, you know, going back to, you know, what I started this video with, he knows that Mike Bobo knows what he's doing. And I think he's happy with uh, the way they performed in the red zone and on third down last week. Just got to carry it over into this week, guys. Thanks for watching this video. As always, make sure you read all of this over on Dog Post. This is a free story, and that newsletter in the link down below is free to sign up to. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you on the website.